the Select Subject tool inside of both Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, great tool. Just uh, saves so much time over the way we used to have to make uh, masks and selections inside of those programs. But if you've used it, you've probably noticed it's not always perfect. And, and I could probably give you a hundred ways to try to refine select subject. Uh, but in this video, rather than give you a hundred, I'll give you probably three or four of my most used ways that when it doesn't work perfectly, how I go in there and try to make those edges a little bit better. Let's jump in. Uh, first off, just know I'm doing this inside of Lightroom um, and we're going to use the masking options inside of there. And if you're using Photoshop and Camera Raw, whether you open up a raw photo or you go to the Camera Raw filter, the masking option is right over there and the same exact options that I'll be demonstrating will work inside of there as well. So first one, we'll use a landscape photo. You might not always use select subject in a landscape photo just because of these AI generating models don't always see the same subjects that we might think are the subject in the landscape, but works pretty good here. We'll click on select subject. Remember, this is all about refining <laughs> emojis, apparently. Uh, this is all about refining select subject. So uh, zoom in a little bit here and you can see it's selected a little bit of the sky. Now also it's all about refining it without painstakingly brushing things away uh, manually. So in this case, if your subject's got sky around it, I really have never seen a time where this tip doesn't work. So we're gonna go to subtract, and then we're gonna go in here and click on select sky. But because we're subtracting it, it's gonna subtract whatever sky that it finds. So if the subject's got sky around it, and that subject bled, that select subject bled into the sky, just hit subtract select sky, you'll see it go away. You can undo it, again, subtract, select sky, and you see those areas went away, okay? That's a really good one. That's one I use actually very, very often on, on most photos if I'm using select subject. Uh, just to show you on a different photo here. So again, we'll go to select subject and you can see on the wings that it did grab some of that area in the sky there. So we go to subtract, select sky and works great. Uh, another option, which I actually really just thinking of now, I didn't really, it's not even included. I was only gonna show you three, but I guess it's gonna be four tips now, would be subtract. And you could go try to subtract color range. And then you could go just kind of, you know, just grab uh, with the eyedropper there, just grab color range. Uh, if it's a good solid color like the sky here, and that would be a good way to refine that subject mask as well. Really quick word from our sponsor. While this video isn't all wildlife, it's a little bit of everything. I do have a course called Wildlife Editing Secrets. And if you're into wildlife photography, and while I largely would agree with everybody that you know a wildlife photo needs to be good in camera, where for some reason we do so much landscape editing, you never see a lot on wildlife. I think it's gotta be great in camera, but there's so many things that are out of our control um, when it comes to you know removing distractions, working with the light, bright light, dark light, skies, uh, making textures, feathers and fur appear sharper, have more, more depth, noise reduction. All those things are covered in this course. So uh, I think it's, it's a great priced course. It's just the right amount of time that can teach you exactly what you need to know to, to take some of those wildlife photos up a notch. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. All right. Next up, we're going to use a uh, we're going to use a photo. Uh, this one's from Robert McWilliams. So I have a course on wildlife editing, and uh, I did the course with other people's photos rather than mine, just because it gets monotonous with my own. So thank you, Robert, for uh, for allowing me to use this photo in the course in the video here. But this is uh, this is a really good one. Let me delete my let me delete my masks, and we'll go over here to select subject, and you're going to see it's going to select too much in the photo here. So in the first one we did select, uh, we, we subtracted select background or select sky, but we can also subtract with the object selection tool. And this is another great way to refine that select subject because the object selection tool will find objects for you. So we'll click subtract objects. And then the way this tool works is you'll see there's just basically a brush and then there's a lasso area where you would just lasso around something. So I'll use the brush option for this. Right and left bracket keys will make that brush bigger or smaller and we'll go through there and just brush. And the great part about it is I don't even care about the intersection with the lion because it's gonna take care of that. And you can see it did a really good job down there to remove that area. Now I'm not saying it's only gonna always gonna be perfect, but I think it did the hard work for us 
there's a little bit left to take away from there. And again, you might have to use multiple techniques to do this. In this case, I, you know, I would probably just subtract with the brush and just clean that up and get rid of uh, anything that it didn't grab with that object selection tool. But that, that, that object selection tool never gets talked about enough. I think it's uh, one of the best ones out there. Okay, moving on to another example here. So we did landscape, we did a couple wildlife here. Let's switch over to a portrait just to give you a variety. So we'll go to our masking tools. You could do either one. You could select the subject because select subject and selecting a person work pretty close to each other. They're, they're not identical, but um, I would always suggest trying both of them if you're not getting a good selection from one or the other. But we'll select the person here, although select subjects pretty close. Uh, and I'm just gonna click entire person, create mask. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll zoom in and again we're assuming we want to do something to the subject or maybe we want to do something in reverse to the background but getting a good subject selection uh, is key if we ever wanted to do something to the background in this case did a good job on the hair but there is some spillover you'll see some areas along the edges there if you're going to pixel people a little bit that aren't perfect so if i did try to make this brighter or darker you start to see a little bit more of a glow in some areas that you shouldn't so what we can do is we go over here to subtract, um, select sky, wouldn't do the trick because that's one that we saw already, but there's no sky back there. There's really no objects back there that we would need to remove or refine. But another one you can use is select background, all right? Because that will remove the background or, or, or you know, you're subtracting it. So it's gonna take away the background. So let's click on it and you'll see it gets better. All right, Commander Control Plus to zoom in a little bit more. I'll undo that one. Again, subtract, select background, and you'll see it did a nice job of getting rid of a lot of those areas that we didn't want. You know, if you think you're gonna select every strand of hair, forget it. There's no program in the world that'll do that. But to get some of those areas that weren't even hair, they were part of the background, I think that can be a, a really important part of making a good mask and a good selection. Uh, lastly, so you see me using Lightroom here and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of Lightroom. I use Lightroom for, for most of my photo editing. However, there are times where I think Bridge, Adobe Bridge, which is Adobe's file browser, just like your Finder and Explorer window on uh, your computers, can be a really good option to use and to look at our photos. I did a video on that one recently and a lot of people really resonated with a lot of people who also have similar workflows. So if you're looking for another video to go watch next, that would be a great place to stop.